Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, where we're on a mission to empower women to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. We bring you all the information, inspiration, and motivation you need to create a life of happiness, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the happy black woman herself, Rosetta Thurman. Hello and welcome to the Happy Black Woman podcast. I am Rosetta Thurman, founder of Happy Black Woman, where my mission is to empower black women all over the world to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. And I am here with you for another live show. I'm recording it live. And those of you listening to the podcast, you're hearing the awesome recording of that call. I'm recording it live so that I can take some live callers. I really enjoy doing that in our 100th episode. If you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to our episode 100. And I'm going to be doing these as often as I can so that we can really not just hear insight from me, but also hear questions from our global audience. So thank you all for joining me and thank you all for listening to the podcast. Now, we have a very special topic today, and that is really addressing what are the reasons why it's so difficult for us to achieve our goals. And there is Definitely a question that I get a lot from our Happy Black Woman tribe, and that is, how can I stop getting in my own way? And I've been doing these beautiful workshops on the East Coast around how do you really create your ideal life and what are the barriers that hold you back from taking action on what you say you want to do. And we've been having such amazing conversations. I came back from Atlanta last night, or yesterday afternoon. And it really was a great opportunity for me to be in person with so many women and hear firsthand what the challenges and the struggles are. So I want you to know that you're not alone, and I want you to know that there are a few things that you can do to stop sabotaging your success. When you find yourself getting in your own way, when you find yourself not taking action when you know you should be, when you find yourself procrastinating, that is self-sabotage. You are actively sabotaging your success. You are actually preventing yourself from getting what it is that you say you want to get. And in order to to stop that, you're going to have to do some inquiry. You're going to have to get honest with yourself and get real with yourself. So what I want to share with you today is how you can start getting out of your own way, specifically three ways to stop sabotaging your success. And so you may want to take notes on this. So that it can help you when you get into this phase. And some of you may be there right now. So first of all, what I want to tell you is that there are a lot of ways that you can sabotage your success. And I want to share with you how they show up. So one of the main ways that self-sabotage shows up is procrastination. When you say you want something in your life, you want to get a new job, you want to start your business, you want to start dating again, you want to improve your health, you want to lose weight, you want to start traveling, all those different things that you may want to do, but then you procrastinate on them. You know what to do. It's not that you don't know what to do. It's just that you're not doing it. You're procrastinating on it. And the problem with procrastination is that it can feel really normal if when you've done it for a long time, you end up normalizing it. But it's not normal to procrastinate on the things that you want to do because you know that if you don't do those action steps, you're not going to get it. So when you find yourself procrastinating, when you find yourself being a perfectionist, trying to wait until everything is perfect or wait until your idea is fully fleshed out, that's a form of self-sabotage because you know that if you just put it out there, you would get some traction on it. And then maybe you would have to deal with your own brilliance, with your own success. So that's some of the ways that you might know that you are self-sabotaging. When you find, when people ask me, I don't know why I keep procrastinating. There is a reason behind that. The, one of the main reasons why you procrastinate, which is a form of self-sabotage, is because you're afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of the unknown. What would it be like if you were actually successful? What would it be like if you actually got what you wanted? That fear of the unknown holds many of us back. Even if you're in a crappy situation right now, even if part of your life really sucks, at least you know what it feels like for it to suck. (laughs) At least you know what it feels like for you to not get what you want, but you don't know what it feels like to get what you want. 
So that's why I am doing this topic because it comes up so often. Three ways to stop sabotaging your success. So I'm going to dive right into the three ways and you're going to want to take some notes. Number one, number one way to stop sabotaging your success. Make a decision. Make a decision. Stop being so wishy-washy about what you want. Stop changing your mind every five minutes. When you don't make a decision, when you're like, well, maybe I'll get a new job this year, or maybe I'll start my business. Maybe I'll take that trip I've been wanting to take. Maybe I'll start eating healthy. Maybe, 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 maybe turns into never. And so when you don't make a decision, it allows you to not take action, and that allows you to not get what you want. So one of the main ways that we self-sabotage is we don't make a, a clear decision on what it is that we want. And so if we don't make a decision, you're not held accountable for the results of what it is. So what a lot of my clients tell me is, Rosetta, I feel like if I admit that I want to move to another state or I want to get a new job or I want to have a successful business, then if it doesn't happen, then I'll feel like a failure. But if I don't say it, then I don't have to feel like a failure. And that is the wrong attitude to have. If you make a decision that this is what you want and this is what you're going to do and this is what's going to happen, there's no reason that it would not happen for you unless you prevent it from happening. So when you make a decision, when you say, this is what I'm going to do, I have made up my mind, it gives you the opportunity to be successful. If you don't make a decision at all, if you if you don't decide that you're going to be successful in whatever area of your life you want to work on, then there's no way that you're going to get it because you're wishy-washy. The universe doesn't know what you want. You keep saying you don't know what you want. You keep changing your mind. Well, maybe I want this. Maybe I want to live in this place. Maybe I want to live in that place. You have to make a decision. You have to commit to something before you can make it happen. And here's the truth about making a decision. If you make a decision and you start moving forward on a certain path and then you learn something or or you get new information that leads you into another path, that's okay. But you have to make a decision first for you to even get going on that path, for you to even start making progress on that. You have to make a decision. And if you've been avoiding making a decision, trying to play like you don't know what you want, well, I don't really know, or, you know, I'm not really clear, I'm not really sure I need to get clarity. Many of you have been trying to get clarity for years, and it's time to stop sabotaging yourself by trying to get clarity. You are 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, you're clear, you know what you want, you just haven't made a decision. And the decision is what has you move forward in your life. Every successful woman that you've seen, she has made a decision that she's going to do what it is she wants to do. She's made a decision. She's made up her mind. And that is why she's getting what she wants. You cannot go back on your decisions every week and wonder why you're not having success. Wonder why you're not achieving your goals. Make a decision. All right. Number two, number two way to stop sabotaging your success. Stop asking the wrong people for advice. Stop asking the wrong people for advice. And what do I mean by that? How is that a form of self-sabotage? Well, you know the people in your life. You know your family. You know your friends. You know your colleagues and your coworkers. You know the people in your life who are negative and have nothing good to say. Why would you ask those same people for advice on what you want to do with your life? Why would you ask people who have never taken a risk on anything what you should do in your business, in your love life, in your in your lifestyle? Why would you ask somebody who's afraid to go to Orlando, should you go to Greece? It just doesn't make any sense. And the reason why we ask the wrong people for advice is because they validate the fears that we already have. That's why it's a form of self-sabotage. If you're asking someone who is generally, you know them to be a, a person who's scared of moving forward, scared of getting out of their comfort zone. If you ask that person, you know what they're going to say. They're going to say, girl, I don't know about that. Are you sure you should do that? I don't think that sounds right. 
you're asking that person because they're going to validate the fear that you have, and it's going to give you permission to step back. It's going to give you permission to stop, to doubt, to quit, to procrastinate, to start thinking about it. You don't need to keep thinking about it. If you trust yourself, you know that you don't need anybody's permission or validation for what it is that you want to do. Stop asking the wrong people for advice because if they have never done anything great in their life, if they've never taken any risks in their life, they're not usually going to be the people that tell you to do that in your own life. You have to ask the right people, people who've already done what it is that you want to do, people who have already been where you want to go, people who are going to say, girl, you're, they're not going to say, girl, you're crazy. They're going to say, girl, you are brilliant. I've been waiting for you to do something like that. Let me see how I can help you. Let me see how I can encourage you, lift you up and speak life into your vision and your dreams. You have to ask the right people. And it doesn't mean that you stop talking to to the people in your life that are fearful or stop being friends with them, but it just means that you need to protect your goals and your dreams from being crushed by people who are never going to do very much in their life. And they're probably happy with that. They're probably okay with that. They're probably fine with that, but you're not. If you have big dreams and big goals, obviously you're not okay with that. So number two way to stop self-sabotaging is to stop asking those wrong people. Stop asking other people to validate your fear. Stop asking people to tell you that it's okay not to take a risk. One of the things that I always tell my clients and my students is don't come to me if you're looking for someone to co-sign your limitations because I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to co-sign your limitations. I'm not going to, people come to me all the time. Well, I'm a, how can I be successful in my business if I'm a single mom? I'm not going to say because you're a single mom, you can't be as successful as somebody with no kids. That doesn't make any sense. There are single moms out there who are making billions. Look them up. You're looking for the wrong information. You're looking for a reason not to do what you want to do. And so you're asking people who are going to tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it when what you should be doing is seeking out people who have already done it despite their circumstances, despite the odds, despite the challenges. Those are the people who are really going to encourage you and move you forward. But if you're stuck in self-sabotage and you're afraid of the unknown and you want someone to tell you, girl, I don't know if you should do that, you know the right people to go to for that. The key for you is to find the people who are going to say, yeah, you're a single mom, so what? You can still make it happen. Yeah, you may have made some mistakes in the past, so what? You can still move forward. Yeah, you may have bad credit, but so what? Look at our president of the United States. He's filed for bankruptcy. He has gotten loans from all kinds of people and and not even paid back those loans, and he's still billionaire status. Why can't we do the same thing? You know, I'm not saying that he's a role model, but what I'm saying is we got to use some of the tools that people have been using for years who don't necessarily look like us to get ahead and not let that hold us back. So number three way to stop sabotaging your success. This is a big one. This might make some of you guys mad, but I'm not here for everybody to like me. I want to really help you understand that happiness I am the happy black woman. I lead this amazing community, but happiness begins with truth. This is not about everything being beautiful all the time and all your decisions being easy when you're a happy black woman. It's not always easy to make certain decisions in your life. And that's why I say happiness begins with truth. You cannot truly be happy unless you're willing to look at what is going on for you, the reality of that, and not sweeping things under the rug. So number three way to stop self-sabotaging is stop settling for less than what you say you want. Stop settling for less than what you deserve. Stop settling for what you say you don't want. When you get clear about what you want in your life, it doesn't make any sense for you to then accept or tolerate what it is that you do not want. For instance, If you say that, you know, you want a certain type of man, you want a man who's going to respect you and who's going to support you and who's going to be romantic and all those different things that you may want in a man. And then all of a sudden, someone tries to come into your life who is not any of those things, (laughs) who is not supportive, who's actually intimidated by your success, a man who he barely 
can bring himself to organize a date to go out to dinner. You know, he's not that romantic. And he really doesn't have a good relationship with his family, all the things that you may want. He's not family oriented at all. How does that man end up in your life? How does that kind of person even cross the threshold of your of your apartment? When you say that you want something specific, I'll use another example with a job, for instance, if you want a certain type of job that pays a certain amount of money and gives you a certain level of leadership, how is it that you are allowing other opportunities to come into your life where you get a job that has a crappy salary and the boss doesn't respect you, you have anxiety when you walk through the door, how does that even begin to come close to what's acceptable for you. When you say you want something specifically, and then you allow yourself to settle and accept something that is not that, and in fact, in many cases, it's nowhere near that, you are sabotaging your success. How can you get what you want if you keep allowing things that you don't want to take up space in your life? How can you ever get what you want if you keep allowing things that you don't want to take up space in your life. It doesn't work that way. So if you want to be successful in any area of your life, you have to know that you have to continue to make room for it. You can't allow anything that's not that to take root, to take hold, to take up space, because then what you want can't come in. You have to say, no, no, I'm not going to date this person to pass the time. No, I'm not going to take this job because it's the first job that that offered me a position you have to hold out and sometimes it's not easy you may have to hold out a few more weeks but what you want is coming to you but it cannot come to you if you accept anything less the universe god whatever you believe in that is acting on your behalf behind the scenes from a spiritual perspective if you are saying hey i want this amazing thing but i'll accept this okay thing i'll accept this mediocre thing i'll accept this other thing you're not going to be able to experience what it is that you say that you want because now there's no room for it. If there's some, you know, if there's some deadbeat man laying in your bed, how can the amazing man come in? It's impossible. It's impossible. So those are the three ways that I can offer for you today to stop self-sabotage. Number one, make a decision. Number two, stop asking the wrong people for advice. And number three, stop settling for less than what you deserve and what you desire. And with that, I'm going to ask you to, those of you who are on the phone, press star two. If you have a question that you'd like to discuss on this topic, press star two on the phone. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to give you some coaching about this. So if you're on the phone, press star two. And of course, if you're listening online, you can type in your question and I can read it out. So what I want to say first, you know, as you guys are queuing up for your questions, I want to say that I would love to work with you further on this topic, on your mindset. We have our signature event coming up in January. It's called Manifest Your Vision, three-day mindset retreat. Right now, you can still take advantage of our $200 off of your ticket. If you go to manifestyourvision.com, you can get yourself registered. It is January 12th through the 14th in Fort Lauderdale. It's the warmest place we can think of to go in January in the United States. So it's going to be an amazing opportunity for you to go deeper into these topics. We're going to go over how you can discover your purpose, develop your vision, break through your barriers, and take inspired action on your goals for 2018. And yes, we're going to have a vision board party. And yes, we're going to do board breaking so that you can feel what it feels like in your body to overcome barriers. And yes, you're going to have an amazing time networking and connecting with women from all over the world. I want to see you there. Go to manifestyourvision.com and grab your ticket and save $200 off for a limited time. I think we've got until the end of October for you to get that, which is coming up really quickly. So go to manifestyourvision.com to register for the retreat in January in Fort Lauderdale. All right. So I am going to start taking some questions on the phone here. Press star two now. You're not going to be able to wait until the very, very end and raise your hand because I'm going to be moving on with my Monday here. So if you have a question, press star two now. And I'm going to start with Iris. 
Hi, how you doing? Can Hi, you hear me? Your question. Okay. I know that you said not to settle and I absolutely agree with you. Just my biggest problem is that as I'm taking the steps to reach my dream, I feel like I have to settle in order to get some of the things that I want to do. For example, like I don't want to really go back to work giving 40 hours, even if I like the job, I just don't really want to give up my time that much. But then in order to get a certain income to provide for my needs, it feels like I'll have to. And I get stuck because I really don't want to do the number of the interim steps to get to what I want. Yeah. But then, yeah, I feel like I still have to do something to go forward. Got it. This is a great question, Iris. And I just want to repeat it for everyone listening. You know, what Iris is asking is very common. I don't want to settle, but I feel like there are all these interim steps that have to happen before I get what I want. And I want to address that in a few ways. So and thank you for your question, Iris. Hopefully this will be helpful to you and everyone else listening. So what I hear a lot and why I say that I won't co-sign your limitations is because a lot of women think that you have to take all these, like, you have to take these 10 steps before you can get what you want. And often that is not the case. And I'll give you an example. This is, for me, this is a shift in perspective. This requires a shift in perspective for you to understand and to see if it resonates with you. What, how can you shift your perspective so that you can get what you want faster? Back in 2009, I thought that I had to have a PhD. I thought I had to go to school for seven years and pay $100,000 to be Dr. Thurman before people would listen to me, before they would hire me to speak, before I could even write my book. Now, truth be told, intellectually, I knew that that was not true, but emotionally, I felt like I had to have some type of credibility or validation by having this doctor in front of my name before I could be influential. But the truth was that all I had to do was decide, make a decision, like I said earlier, that I was going to go out and speak and share my message with the world and that I was going to go and publish my book. It was a decision. And I could, I could have made the decision to go to school for seven years and do $100,000. And I'm not knocking anybody who has a PhD. There's nothing wrong with higher education at all. For me, it was the wrong Root because I was doing it for validation and for credibility when all I needed to do was make a decision that I'm going to go out there, I'm going to speak and people are going to pay me, that I'm going to publish my book and people are going to buy it and read it. And once I made that decision, I knew I didn't need to do a PhD. I just had to take action on what it is that I wanted to do. And so I'm not sure for you, Iris, what the shift in perspective needs to be. But for me, that was what had to happen. And so I quit my PhD program and I went straight to speaking and publishing my book. I published my book, not even, I think it was maybe not even a year after I made that decision, started putting it together and all of that, realizing that I didn't need to take all these interim steps seven years (laughs) before I could be who I wanted to be and do what I wanted to do. And so a lot of people, they're taking these steps. Again, sometimes it is a form of self-sabotage to think that you have to take all these 10 steps. So if if you want to work for yourself, start getting clients. Make that the priority, not to say that you, you you can't have a job in the meantime, but I call that job a bridge job, a bridge job. Like you have to drive over this bridge so you can have money to sustain yourself. You don't have to have the job first before you can start your business, they can be simultaneous and it's just a different perspective in how you look at the job. The job is there to provide for your needs and you don't have to, you may not have to work 40 hours a week. You may be able to only work 20 or 30 hours to get the exact amount that you need to sustain yourself while you're building your business. You don't have to go through all these different jobs and steps before you can make that happen. So it may feel like there's seven steps, but maybe there's just one that you need in order to get what you want. So Iris, I'm going to unmute you again and just ask, does any of that resonate with you or or what sparked for you from what I just said? Yes, it does. It does resonate. And I think what it is, is that I'm thinking my mind does have to shift. And so some of the things that you said before, I know you've always said it doesn't have to be either or. And I think Mm -hmm. when you were talking, that came back to my mind. And so I'm, I'm, kind of stuck in between, oh, well, I have to do this or I have to do that. And I can't do both. And mm-hmm. yeah, it is a definitely a mind shift 
that maybe I don't have to take so many steps to get where I want. Um, yeah, and and I love what you said about it. it's not an either. It doesn't have to be an either or. Either I work a job or I do my business. I did it. I did both for two years. But because I did both, I was able to quit my job within two years. And you don't have to see your job as as what it is. It's like the the means to an end. It's not the end. It's your job right. is funding your business. Thank God for jobs. Nothing wrong with jobs. They fund our businesses. They give you health insurance. They provide the the space for you to be able to take those risks as an entrepreneur. So thank God for jobs. But you don't have to get one that's stressful. You don't have to get one that's 40 hours a week. If you don't need 40 hour a week money, you might be able to get by with a part-time job or 30 hours a week or something like that. There's so many possibilities if you're open to them. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, that's what I have to see. Awesome. There are more possibilities than what I came up with. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for your question, Iris. I know that you inspired so many other ladies listening. Good luck with everything. Thank you. All right. Great, great question there. And that is what's available for you when you shift your mindset. So I'm seeing, thank you, Lita, for joining us from Guyana. She says that, I'm a work in progress. I'm putting my ideas together. Uh, hope to officially make contact and have your deeper input. So, Lita, I hope that you join us in January. For those of you that know you need to go deeper, that is the best way to do it, to come and work with me in person, to come and be surrounded by over 150 black women from all over the world who can lift you up who can support you, who can connect with you and show you that there is another way. It's not an either or. Have you thought about this? What about this? Forget what that person said. There's nothing like being in the energy of positive sisterhood. And that's what I wish for you. And that's all available for you at Manifest Your Vision 2018. Go to ManifestYourVision.com to get yourself registered. And I thank you for joining me on this episode of the Happy Black Woman Podcast. I hope that you are inspired to stop self-sabotaging. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Happy Black Woman Podcast. If you want all the show's notes from today's episode, go to HappyBlackWomanPodcast.com. Plus, we'll send you a copy of Rosetta's free life mapping workbook. We look forward to empowering you next time. And until then, do something this week that makes you happy.